Hello? Ah, hello, the German Empire. So, uh, we're gonna be, I'm, I'm taking a little break from uh, reading and doing other shit today. Sorry for missing. Um, I'm going uh, to do this thing that Crusader Kings do, is uh, do, and I don't know if it's just for the weekend or something, but it's called The Monarch's Journey, and uh, I really don't understand exactly what it is. Uh, <laughs> Um, but it seems to be that like you can get some sort of points uh, for playing as this particular guy at least. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna be doing that. This appears to be um, King Conan. So for those of you who do not know, King Conan was a Duke of Brittany who um, uh, died in 1066. You know, it's one of those busy years. Uh, he was a major major rival of um, William the Conqueror. Uh, which, uh, basically William, before he had become King of England, used to, uh, put a lot of support behind, uh, rebels that were, um, fighting King Conan here. Uh, and then, and then of course, like, eventually William, part of the deal that he made with the Pope regarding the invasion of England is, uh, he said, like, the Pope's backing also meant that nobody could attack Normandy while he was away in England. Uh, although, I, I did once hear a story that, uh, Conan got, like, the message that, like, don't attack Normandy or else, um, you're, you're gonna piss off the Pope. And then Conan said, well, I'm gonna just do that anyway. Um, but it's, it, he kind of died in a weird way because some sources say, sources say that he, uh, was poisoned. Now his father was also poisoned, but it, they said it was by poisoned gloves, which, uh, is a little weird. I don't know how that works. Uh, so, so that's who we're playing and, uh, we can get some kind of rewards or something here. Uh, and then there's points, so it says we can get like a wizard's beard, a page boy, chaperone, jester's hat. I, I would like to get this, the cone-shaped tendon, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, this is just so messed up, the Joan of Arc hottest hairstyle around. So I don't really understand how this works, to be uh, totally honest with you all. So we're just gonna try to see what it does. Um, Actually, I'm looking it up right now on the other. Okay, so it seems that these are going to be haircuts that you can use eventually one day in CK3. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. So does that imply that you'd have to buy these later? Uh, I don't know how I feel about this, but in any case, we're going to see. Uh, there's supposed to be like some challenges here, so we'll get six points if we control ten provinces. We have two sons that are alive, we get six points. Members, now this is what's interesting, preemptive self-defense, members of William's dynasties killed, uh, zero out of three. Let's just play. Also, there's this bronze mode thing, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but, uh, hello, Paul Kvedding BJ92 Bjorn Kolax Kolan from Sweden. Good to see you. What time is it over there? That'd be like 10 hours ahead. Oh, it's probably sort of in the evening over there, right? Anyway, let's see how this works. We're gonna play this for a bit. Alright, so does it say anything specific? Or like, how do I... So we're wanting to kill members of William's dynasty. So I guess let's start with him. Not too many people are in on this. So, I don't know, Monarch's Journey is just what they call the mod. Nope. Strong. Nope. How about quick? 
Oops, misspelled that. Hmm. <sighs> Who we got with good rank? Trying to find somebody to marry. Oh, I've got a claim on the Duchy of Normandy. That is, uh, really funny. <laughs> He's not independent, though. So I guess, do I want to wait for him to be independent? Would that be easier or harder than taking on France itself? Jeez, I forgot how small the armies are in this time period. He's got 15,000 men. A lot of that's event troops. All right, character focus. We're going to do... Uh, let's do business for right now. Business, 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 business. Working. Okay, let's sow some descent over here. Uh, we are going to also put a spy network here in Caen. Collect some taxes and let's see, research some cultural tech and train troops. Cool. I can create. Uh, I can already create two duchies. Is this new? The Duchy of Penthar? Pen is that new? I don't remember that being its own duchy. Then again, they've changed. I remember they did. Now they did change some Celtic stuff. So like Ireland got broken up into uh, more counties, for example. Yeah, for example, these are four counties. I think these used to just be three. Uh, these, I think it's these three were all one, or it might have been these five actually. Yeah, so they they've broken up some areas into more counties. In fact, if I look at the de jure duchies... Oh yeah, that's about what I remember. I recommend your channel to outer YouTuber Tokrava. Who is that? Hmm. I'm looking him up now. He's somebody playing Stellaris. Oh, he's, a. Uh... Oh, she, excuse me. She is, uh, live from PDXCon right now. It looks like she plays a lot of Stellaris in Surviving Mars. I'm not familiar with her work, but she's got 4.22k, so... Not huge. Not like I have time to really, um... Play, uh, freaking. I play. I don't have much time to watch other people play anymore. Anyway, if I'm on YouTube, I'm making my own stuff. All right, let's become king of Brittany. And why can we not create the kingdom? I need to, besides that, I need to have another duchy title. Okay, I need two duchy titles. Need the money, etc., etc. Yeah. Yep. CK three is confirmed. We know basically nothing about it right now, but uh, we know it's coming. Okay, uh, let's look for a court physician, and uh, are we pretty much ready to go? Oh, yeah, Brad, I didn't end up finding anybody to marry. Let's find somebody with really high intrigue. Ooh, a Norman down here who has a claim on Apulia. I think that is our winner right there. So she's uh, this is a daughter of, um, I believe it's a daughter. No, not a daughter, but somehow related to Duke Robert the Fox, which is so strange to me. I've always only heard him referred to as the weasel. So unusual. For me to see that. Wow, look at that big Byzantine Empire with all this Asia Minor. Remember, guys, if you're not if you're not uh, watching my CK2 Cominian restoration, you are missing out. By the way, I am still raising money for a new hard drive because I'm running out of space. So feel free to donate uh, the tip jar and the um, bar. To, uh, should should be uh, should be popping up now. If you donate to Super Chat, it should fill up the bar. You will have little animations and things like that. They'll go off. Actually, let me uh, let me show you guys a little demonstration uh, how the cognac glass works. Give me just a minute. Just need to go to my account. So, for example, if somebody, uh, you know, does a super chat, it's going to look like this. Great. Good to have you here, Blood Rider. Now, 
course, Nomad. Something that I'm gonna do. Actually, I did already read, but I, I don't know. I, I don't take too much stock in uh, a lot of the stuff that I see uh, whenever the early parts of a game come out. But I'm already seeing some people claim there's not gonna be... I've read some of the Asterix comics, yes. Uh, I've, I've heard people say there's not gonna be Merchant Republics or Horse Nomads in CK3, uh, which sounds unnecessarily pessimistic. Wait, do I want this guy? Holy crap, yes I do! 26, damn. Uh, but like, how can you not have Horse Lords in Crusader Kings 2, or Horse Nomads? Uh, kind of, a, you know, the Mongol invasions, the Turkish invasions, these are kind of important I ideas. Uh, an impressive woman has recently arrived at your court. Apparently the reason for her visit has been to arrange a trade agreement with local merchants. Well, people did not think much of her at first. Now you have heard many courtiers praising her savvy business sense. Perhaps you should make her an offer. Um, nah, it's fine. Oh my goodness. What is this bullshit? What is your problem? Whoops. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, so my uncle is trying to press a claim. Hold on. What the hell is your problem, dude? Because he's a title claimant. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we don't we don't know what's gonna happen, but I think that if they do CK three and they they uh, I don't uh, now let me let me be one hundred percent clear here. I'm just I'm not speculating anything that's going to happen in CK three. Uh, we certainly do not know yet. Maybe people at PDXCon do, but I'm not at PDXCon. I have school and whatnot. I can't go to Berlin for a week. Uh, the there is no way... I think there would be some serious, serious backlash if there was any countries or nations that you could not play at launch, meaning like how in the original CK2, you know, you can't you can't play Islamic nations unless you have the DLC. You can't play the Horse Lords unless you have the DLC. Uh, you know, since the, obviously the player base is... Uh, hmm, wait a minute. Did my wife cheat on me? She is lustful. And an elusive shadow. She has amazing intrigue. What's an S F V again? What is S F V, Gabriel? I don't understand. Does that stand for something? A S V. A S F V. Uh, but anyway, you know now the player base has grown so much, and I think that if you couldn't, um, I rule here, damn it. If you couldn't, yeah. If you if you couldn't play a lot of it, um, oh, Street Fighter. Uh, there, there would be some, some pretty bad backlash. Okay, why do you not like me? Because we're both ambitious. There's a new World of Kaiserreich video. Video? There's a new video? I heard the, um, I know there was the new, the new picture. Um... I have not heard that there was a, a new video though. Let me let me look into this right now. Hold on a second. Oh, oh, it's like oh, it's a pa it's a live stream of the panel is going on right now. I did not know. Well, that'll be there. I'll look at it later. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. It's it's really hard. Uh, I think that uh, I'm trying to. I think since Stellaris and Hearts of Iron four, it kind of seems like they haven't. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, there we go. Did I become deceitful? No, I'm fine. Uh, so I think ever since Stellaris and Hearts of Iron four came out, and what was that in 2016? Uh, there hasn't really been um, any launches that people seem to be consistently 
Uh, oh my god, I will not be blackmailed, fuck off, here we go, here, here comes the nonsense. Alright, I'm gonna have to borrow money from the Jews so I can hire mercenaries really quickly. Uh, yeah, it just, it just seems like there's not, like, people have just been really disappointed with how things were at launch. I was, uh, really disappointed in Imperator. Uh, at launch, some of you may remember I was doing uh, an Ashoka campaign, and uh, I just, I just ended up stopping doing it uh, because I was just going around clicking buttons. I wasn't actually doing anything. You know what I mean? Gwencore. Victoria 3, you see, here's the thing, it's, it's, here's the duality of Paradox fans, is everybody always complains about how every new Paradox game sucks, and they also really want Victoria 3. It's like, which is it? <laughs> you know? Uh, as is tradition, my wife, uh, Roka, underwent her churching after recovering and cleansed herself from the region of pregnancy, and so forth, and yada, yada, yada. Okay, let's just get the organization up and then we're going to attack this army. I'm only going to play for a little bit. I'm just trying to kind of just get my mind off of things right now. I got hit and run yesterday, uh, so my car got a little bit messed up. Nothing, nothing functional appears to be damaged, but I'm just really fucking mad right now because, um, like, I went to the police station and they just didn't even seem to give a shit. Um, but I've already done my claim and everything and I was reading for a bit and I was just distracted so um, just wanted to take my mind off things for a bit. Uh, da, da, da. Let's have him. Yeah, keep going and sowing descent. All right. So we're gonna definitely uh, revoke this guy's title uh, as soon as we as soon as we win the war. Should we go ahead and assault? Nope, that was a bad idea. Yeah, it's mercenaries though. There we have it. Okay, so, guess whose titles are mine now? Gonna revoke that, and, uh, wait, why can't... where'd the thing go? Oh, yeah. Alright, thank you very much. Uh, we'll go ahead and execute him. It's viewed as tyrannical, though. Cain of Brotherhood of Nod. Peace through power, one vision, one purpose. What is that? I don't get it. I, I don't understand. Okay, well, I've, I, I now can create do the duchy. Um, let's at least create the one for Upper Brittany. Uh, now I technically... Oh, I actually could really make three of these. Uh, so to create the Kingdom of Brittany, I'm going to need a... Uh, 197 gold and 100 piety, neither of which I have right now. Uh, I think we'll go for chase, that's additional monthly piety, that helps a little bit. Yeah, so now we just wait. How is, uh, how's this been going? Um, he's defending against the Holy Roman Empire. It also looks like Oh yeah, the, the Norwegians won, and now William is losing against them. <laughs> loser! You're a loser. So hopefully the Holy Roman Empire is going to uh, fuck up France a bit. They always get into this war over Zealand, it never fails. Um, who wants to buy land? Castle tax is going to go off. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Uh, so now, I just need the piety. 
Okay, stewardship keeps rising. I guess what I could do is I could buy some indulgences for my sins. No, oh, I, I don't want to do that. I'd rather donate money or something. Let's try something a little bit easier. Let's go after one of his kids. Yeah, see, we went up to 34% exactly. Oh, main villain of the Command and Conquer games, right? I haven't, I haven't seen those or played those. All right, now we're gonna set up the uh, the trade route. To foreign lands. How are my vassals all feeling about me? I did just crush a major revolt, so they like me. Send him out into hiding. Uh, we want a token of friendship. We'll do the horses. This should give a come back on us with getting like a hundred things. He's only acting in accordance to religion. Oh, good, cool. I've never seen that option. It's because I have the high stewardship. All right, we need to stop these people from arguing about religion. Who? who let, let's see who it is I am trading with. By the way, I am trading with these people out here in India. That's uh, who I'm trying to set up. Try what I am trying to set up. So we are now going to get 141.3 gold, 150 prestige, and we're going to have a trade route for the next 30 years. And we've got business contacts, increasing city vassal opinion by 10. And my prosperity of my capital county is increased a bit. So that, you know, business focus is terrific just for setting that up. Okay. Again, a reminder, if you are a... Uh, it's this I will reward him appropriately. How does he feel about me? Uh, you know, that's it's fine. I've become greedy. I'm pretty sure I was already. Truce. Uh, okay, yeah, so he was defeated. Could not get there. Could not um, defeat Harald Hardrada. So we've got... Big Norway, Mega Norway, very cool. Uh, let's pay back the Jews here in a second. Just, uh, I'd like to get that monkey off my back. Uh, okay, we're gonna support the carpenters. There it is. Repay them. Cool. Uh oh, do we have diseases running around? No, we're fine. Uh, this wants to marry my courtier, sure. We have a kid who doesn't have a guardian. I think, uh, yeah, that'll work. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're really cool. So, wait, do we want to do that? Yes. Cultural tech and whatnot. How many episodes do I usually record during a single gameplay session? Oh, that's tough to say. Sometimes I just do one, like uh, the other day. Okay, I've got the first, I think, 46 episodes of my Byzantine Empire campaign in Crusader Kings 2 already recorded. And um, so obviously a lot of that was done in bulk. But uh, there was a... There was one where... How do I say things without spoiling? There was an episode where, um, in the episode before it, I had just finished up doing a huge war. So I had a lot of internal issues to deal with. I had to organize vassals, um, deal with factions, deal with my personal domains and stuff. So I, I, I remember I had finished a recording session with finishing that war, and then... Uh, some days went by, and I was having a day where I was just doing a lot of work, doing a lot of reading, lots of school stuff, and I just wanted to take a break, and then I remembered, oh yeah, I have to organize all that stuff in my Crusader Kings 2 game, so I booted it up, and I think I spent almost the whole half hour just organizing the realm, finished it, stopped, and th that was it. That was the only episode I recorded in that particular session, because then I went back to doing homework. So it's really uh, variable. Sometimes I've recorded for, I'll, maybe I'll record like eight episodes of something in a row. It, it just depends. And, and when I say in a row, like I'll get up, stretch my legs, walk around, maybe do a little something. Like I sometimes do a lot of laundry while, I, uh, while, while I'm recording maybe. So like 
you know, it's a half hour usually, so I'll go see if I need to move something from the washer to the dryer, go fold some clothes, keep the cycle going, come back and keep recording, things like that. Excellent, my wife is pregnant once more. He'd have two sons, I believe, because I don't know if this guy counts for the challenge or whatever. How many uh, places do I have right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's, uh, let us, you know, go start fabricating a claim. Let's do it right here. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, sure. What could go wrong? Yeah. The Viking Age will never end. The early Middle Ages forever. So right now, uh, we just got to get our piety up to 100, and we can become king, which is awesome. Mmm, an excellent idea. Uh, congratulations! Word is spread far and wide of your achievements. You earned the rank of bronze in the Gloves Come Off Challenge. Because of the poison! That's really funny. Uh, okay, okay. So, okay, yeah, I got the points because I have two living sons now. Here, let's name one of these after somebody in the chat. Guzman! was more the middle middle ages I would disagree well I... oh oh they're twins okay so uh, blood rider 1914 cool I like twins twins and parties that never end uh, what I was saying about the middle ages so some people would say the middle ages begins with um, Constantinople and uh, and you know the his conversion to Christianity or maybe at like Constantinople's death, and, and like yeah yeah well that was his day he converted on his deathbed you, you know what I'm saying, so if you're saying that then you're going hundreds of years before the Viking Age. Um, maybe you could say the Middle Ages begins when Rome falls, which is much later. Uh, so a lot of these definitions are really um, malleable. Constantine. Yeah, what did I say? Did I say Constantinople? I've been playing the Empire a lot, so... Uh, okay. Do we want to imprison this guy? Oh yeah, this is my uncle. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, we'll imprison him. <laughs> Loser. He was my marshal, but it's for the best. Yeah, so, so uh, anyway, what was, I, what was I getting at? Okay, like, for example, here, here's an example of something that I've been dealing with this semester. So I'm taking a French Revolutions class, so we're studying not just the French Revolution, but subsequent things, um, you know, like the Paris Commune, uh, 19... Uh, hey, Pen Kitten, good to see you. What is this? Can, can somebody please explain to me the Brace for Impact thing? Because uh, I just... Do I even care, actually? Uh... So, 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 anyway, I'm taking, I'm taking a French Revolutions class, right? And so we, um, one of the first things we had to read was a book on the French Revolution. So, as I've said many times, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, as I've, as I've said many times, the best way to read a history book is you read the introduction, and then you read the conclusion, and then you start reading the main part of it. So, um, I was reading it, and then I go to the end, and I'm reading the end, and I'm going, wait, what the fuck? And it only goes up to the death of Robespierre and his uh, supporters. Wait a minute, what is this? Provoking the red, the vanity of example, beautification, only truly pious followers of, what? Okay, I'm, okay, so Catholic authority has just become reduced because of impious beautification. Right. So anyway, so then the next week in class, I bring it up to the professor. And I said, why does our French Revolution history book only go up to 1794? Because the main two things that I've ever heard of, as far as like when's the end of the French Revolution, is I hear some people say, well, the French Revolution ends when Napoleon goes down because it's like the end of the chain of events that is started with the calling of the three estates by Louis XVI. 
I personally don't think that's when the French Revolution ends. I personally have been a believer in the uh, the idea that... Oh, I can make this my primary title. <laughs> anyway, I've been a believer in the, uh, the idea that the French Revolution ends in 1799, because that's when Napoleon takes charge. He, uh, you know, there's the coup. Uh, just a second. But, the author of this book, and, and the professor was like, also saying... Here's the thing, like, never expect your professors to always agree with even all the, everything about the books they assign. You know, things are very nuanced. But basically, the author that we were um, reading, uh, what's his name, Eric uh, Hazen, he believes that the French Revolution ends with Robespierre. Because um, after that, you have the Thermidorian reaction, and so it's pulling back from the radicalism of the French Revolution. So the revolution is over, and it's this idea of, okay, we do want a republic, but we need to start putting some limits, and we're going to figure out how far we're going to pull things back. Um, so, so right there, I just gave you three possible different definitions of when does the French Revolution end. Um, just as an example. Uh, let's see... Loses the trait paranoid. Excellent. Paranoid's kind of good, but yeah. I'm glad I'm strong. Too bad I couldn't find a strong wife. Nice! The twins got it though. Oh no, only one of them. Ugh, I thought the one's got chest pains and fever. Uh, so obviously, nothing. none of this is ever set in stone. Uh, what is this? Mm, no. Oh, this is the one I kicked out earlier anyway. No, arrest him! All right, what's going on now? We need to get another court physician. Let's, yeah, do that. Is anybody in the chat? Am I just talking to myself out here? Another example of like malleable interpretations of an age is because uh, I'm also a fan of the idea of the long 19th century, like in quotation marks, the long 19th century. Obviously in a literal sense, uh, hold on a sec. Uh, how's this physician? Oh my gosh, he's fucking trash. Six learning? No. That, that was just trash. Um, ooh, we got the hedge maze uh, thing. Great, great. I'll do it myself as I put on my glove. Uh, or, or I could become friends with my steward. We're, we're already pretty good though. Um, I'll do it myself. Okay, and we have the piety, so I believe we can now become king. Yes. Cool, but well, now I have to get crowned. So we have to organize a coronation ceremony. We're going to hold off on that for a minute. Nice, look at my stats. They're soaring. Now what I think I want to do is uh, let's amass wealth, and then I'll do the treasury thing. Um... Okay, but this is fantastic. See, I am now your equal king, Philip. So, um, yeah, the, the, the 19th century, obviously in a literal sense, the 19th century is 100 years long. But I like to talk about the era in terms of the long 19th century. So, like, it's a period of time going from the French Revolution in 1789 until the beginning of World War I in 1914. Like, that is a continuous period of human history that is all really interlinked, um, for example. Uh, so, so yeah, again, there's just, there's malleability in a lot of these. Uh, I think we're gonna get the statues, or do I want religious figures? The Pope will like me more. The twins are the twins from Dark Souls 3. I haven't played Dark Souls, sorry. The best deal. Oh, that reminds me, though. You guys just... Um, that reminds me. I haven't checked what kind of free games I've been offered lately. Give me a second. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm just, uh, checking something. Wildermyth. myth. 
I was just checking on this site that I use to um, get free games, and I had applied for this uh, one game that I'd get paid to do videos on it. They haven't gotten back to me. Alright. Um, do I think they make China, should they add China to Imperator? The game begins right at the end of the Zoo Dynasty. That sounds like an enormous map that would probably make the game... Uh, no, not Q-Mailer. I, I use Hoovit. Uh, but anyway, the... That sounds like if you included China and Imperator, the map would just become so ridiculously huge that it probably wouldn't even be functional for most people. And I haven't even played Imperator in ages. Uh, I've heard there's been some updates, but I just haven't felt the need. Maybe one day. Alright, so we're going to go with the statues of religious figures so the Pope likes me more. Key mailer though, might need to do this. Alright, so we're gonna do the fountain, I think. Uh, yeah, because I don't wanna be gluttonous. Wine shall flow through the fountain all days of the week. I don't think I've ever gotten that option when I've done this event before. Okay, uh, I don't want to become gluttonous, and plus it is horrifically expensive, so we're just going to go with a fountain. Still only 40, that's pretty good. Let's uh, import some flowers for the exoticness. What are the best DLCs to get for CK2? Is that what you're asking, Fallen King? Okay, let's support that. Um, what else are we doing? There's a secluded part. Yeah, let's do the pavilion. Que romantico. Uh, best DLCs? That's tough to say. It, it kind of depends on what you're doing. Wait, coffers are empty, but the church is rich. Um, I can get 300 gold and I can become cruel. Uh, compromise with them to find the money. We'll do a compromise. Just need a little bit. Uh, okay, and we've become Gardener, and we have a Magnificent Maze, increasing our diplomacy. So everything's now in double digits except for my Marshal. So, uh, probably Holy Fury just for the sheer amount of content you get, but a lot of its content is also dependent on you having other DLCs. So, tough, maybe, like, like Old Gods gives you access to all the overpowered uh, Vikings and stuff like that. Uh, hold on a minute. Yeah, well, we gotta get out of debt before we do the coronation ceremony. Um, you know, obviously, if you want to play in India, you get the Rajas of India, things like that. I've never heard, um, I've never heard anything good about Conclave, um, other than people telling me, "Dude, you need to get Conclave," because it's the only DLC I don't have. And they say, "Dude, why don't you have Conclave?" I said, and then I always say, "Because I've never heard anything good about it, and nobody ever gives me a reason why it's good." They just say, oh, but dude, you need it. You need it, dude. But why? <laughs> Nobody seems to like it. Um, so, the Jewish one is pretty sparse. There's not a lot of Jewish rulers. Um, hmm. This guy wants to be my spy master. Oh, he's so much better. Yeah. We're going to do that. This is my half brother, I think, or something. Uh, do we want technology? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. My wife's got a weak claim, but it'll be inherited. Now, uh, I do want to eventually one day, like here, if we actually look at the religion, I think here's the only Jews. Yeah, there's like one county of Jews here. Oh, no, no, the Khazars, I guess some of them are still around. But for the most part, you don't get much with that. Obviously, you do horse lords if you want to play horse lords. If I could go back in time, uh, because I ended up getting, when I first got Crusader Kings 2, um, it was with a like a package deal. Um, this was many years ago, way before I was uh, you know playing YouTube or anything. Um, so, 
I, I got a bundle deal with several DLCs, and if I can go back in time, and this is what I this is what I tell a lot of people, like, unless you're getting a bundle deal and you know you're going to love it, you should just get the base game and then over time get the, uh, the DLCs. Um, because you, you, you kind of have this situation where there's just so many mechanics. If you have all the DLCs, it could be a little bit overwhelming. And it'll also let you know, um, like, yeah, you're going to just find out over time what it is you want to play. Uh, like right now, I kind of feel that I need to, just because I have the DLCs and I've played them on my own time, but... Because I have the DLCs, like, even though I have, excuse me, even though I have all the DLCs, there's a lot of stuff I have not put on the channel. I've never done a Horse Lord campaign on the channel. I've never done an India campaign on the channel. I've never done a Jewish run on the channel. I have those DLCs and I've played them, but I've never shown them to the channel. And admittedly, I've not done a lot of the achievements because my, my ultimate goal one day is I would love to get every single... Crusader Kings 2 achievement there is. Pope will crown me. Uh, that would, I, I think, be awesome. So, of course, that's going to involve at least three games in India because there is the... Uh, what is this? Uh, but yeah, that would involve at least three games in India because um, there's one where you have to be a Christian ruler of India and you have to convert every county. Same thing for is you know what? Actually, let me let me double check that. I don't want to misrepresent that. CK2 achievements. Uh, okay, but and also let's read this event. Uh, I want you to prove your devotion to the Catholic faith by waging war against the most impious ruler whose wickedness made worthy of excommunication from our Holy Church. I'll bring the sinner to justice. So they want me to go to war with this guy, the King of Leon. Start a war to depose an excommunicate ruler. Upon victory, the Pope will crown you. Interesting. Well, he has me definitely outnumbered. He also has a truce. Um, he's not going to like me. Uh. What do I get out of an excommunication war if I win? Alright, his excommunication will be lifted afterwards. I just get piety and prestige. And he will abdicate. So all I'm all that's gonna do, if I do this, it's just gonna make um wait, this is gonna Yeah, so so this guy this guy will become king. Hmm. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool, Gluzmon, that uh, Byzantine class. Yeah, we're, we're not doing this. Okay, so I think it'll give me an option. Oh, got a daughter born. Any girls in the chat? I don't see any, so we're going to name this one and to be funny. We're going to call this one Pie Bros. After somebody else in the chat, Pie Bros the man. Okay, so what was I talking about? Oh yeah, CK2 achievements. So here, let's pause here for a second. Take a look at all the achievements there are. So if we just look at India, you see, look, as a ruler of non-Indian culture, conquer a king or empire title in India. That's not super duper hard to do, but uh, or like unique. But for example, here. Great Indian Sultanate rule the Empire of Rajasthan and convert all its provinces to um, uh, freaking Islam. So that is, uh, you know, you could argue, let's say it's quote unquote easy. Um, Sephardic Jewish custom character in Spain. I like that idea. I'm going to write it down. Maybe I'll get to it in like three years. Hold on a second, Blood Rider. Sephardi Jewish custom character in Spain. Oh, you know what? And I'll name him after that one guy. Oh shit, I'm blanking out on his name, but like he was a he was a Sephardic Jew who was a part of the Russian Revolution. So like, do a Sephardic Jew custom character in Spain, and then you have to become an emperor in Ru in Russia, right? 
Okay, all right, all right, custom character. Ah, my pin's not working. Shoot, give me a second, give me a second, guys. I don't wanna forget this. Okay. It's a Jewish custom character. All right, so anyway. Um, yeah, so every independent ruler has to be Islamic. So, of course, that's going to take a long time. <laughs> uh, but then you've also got... Where is it? Yeah, looking east of Re and west, the emperor of both Persia and Rajasthan. So that's pretty difficult. My very own subcontinent become the Samrat Chakar Varjin. So you have to take that decision, which basically means you um, you have to hold all of India, basically. Has anyone played the Arbanan culture? I don't know that one. Hold on a sec. Stupid pin. Hold on a sec. Arbanan culture. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so anyway, there's the Rajasthan thing, but then there's also St. Thomas's Dream, rule an Indian kingdom or empire as a Christian and convert all of its provinces. Uh, so really, that's just something that's uh, a uh, 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 just a kingdom. There's plenty of Indian kingdoms. But, uh, yeah, so I want, I'm somebody who wants to 100% every achievement in the game one day, and I've done nothing on the channel in India. But you see, like, look at all those kingdoms. But then if you want to do Rajasthan, that's all this. Rajasthan. Rajasthan? Rajasthan. And, and think about that if you want to have this empire tile and the Persian Empire. See, look at that. It's like practically the Achaemenids. So, there's a whole lot of Crusader Kings too in my future. And uh, whether or not CK3 is good or not... CK2 is not going to go away to the from the channel until I've at least 100% of the achievements. I promise you guys that. Okay, so I'm just going to play for 13 more minutes because uh, I do have work to do. i got to keep reading. Actually, reading about the, uh, the um, Thermidorian reaction that I was talking about before. Because, yeah, for, for, for those of you who are wondering, like, why did the professor only assign a book that went up to 1794? Well, yeah, then there's another book after that. He is covering the Thermidorian reaction. <laughs> so i got to keep reading that book. Uh, one of my serving maids has given birth to a child. According to him, my son is the father. Aren't all my children still prepubescent? Oh, nope, nope. Alan already uh, has grown up. Thank you, Fallen King. I'm telling you, go check out my my Cominian restoration campaign where I play as the Byzantine Empire starting in the Alexiad bookmark. I'm not saying I'm a perfect player, but I'm 47 episodes in. There's going to be some crazy stuff. I make mistakes, but you can learn from my mistakes. And I do make mistakes, but things also do go well. Um, I won't get into too many details, but let's just say I'm picking up plenty of the achievements that I was going for. Uh, whether people like it or not. People have been complaining a lot in the comments. Okay, so we can force him to adopt the child. Give him a beating. Oh no, that'll make him ambitious. That's a bad idea. Um, maybe if he was my heir, but he's not. Don't want to do that. Yeah, a Khazar Jew run could be very cool. I think the only Jewish runs I've ever really seen is people do, um, like, they come, they come down here and they play the Ethiopians. But, yeah, have a, have a horse lord nation create the Kingdom of Israel. That's supposed to be a very, very difficult um, achievement, one of the hardest in the game. In fact, if we go to the CK2 achievements... Let me look at what the percentages are on that in the Steam community. So, the Kingdom of David, which is, as a Jew, create the Kingdom of Israel, only has a 1.7% completion rate um, amongst players, which is just 0.1% more than people who have reclaimed the, uh, the old Imperial borders. Meaning, uh, you know, the, the, they recreate the Roman Empire and then actually bring out the old borders. 
So very difficult. Anyway, we're gonna tell him to confess. Do I play EU4? I haven't. I've literally not played EU4 in years. Um, I I did try to get into it. I did. Le let me put it this way. I do know how to play it. Although I think a couple of DLCs have come out since then, so I don't know anything about those. But I do know how to play EU4. But it just doesn't click with me. Oh, what nights do I say in Fallen King? I don't really have a set streaming schedule, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I, I, I got school and other obligations that uh, make it difficult for me to set a scheduled time. Uh, I usually can't do anything on Thursday mornings, for example. Not that I'm here Thursday mornings this semester, but cause that's when uh, this leaf blower guy comes to the apartments and he just so fucking loud. All right, uh, do we have a new Pope here? No, we're just gonna say any priest will do this time because uh, my vassals are gonna start not liking me. I need to donate some money to the church, whatever. We'll make it extravagant and I'll go into debt. Wild debt. Uh, but Fallen King, I mostly upload things, so always feel free, you know, if you're interested in seeing other CK2 stuff, you can go onto my channel and uh, check the playlist tab. Um, Let's see, other other Crusader Kings 2 ones that I've done is uh, I did a... Uh, cool, so I've become crowned. Uh, this bishop was trying to fight me. Diplomacy! A sound investment. Okay, let's get our intrigue up. By the way, you see, I'm in big time debt, and I'm kind of casually going into debt, which is not always a good idea, but I've now officially been crowned by a bishop, so that's going to give me more prestige and piety every month. Great. Uh, so, so as I was saying, already on the channel, I have some um, playlists of uh, Crusader Kings 2. I don't think everything I've played in there is actually in the, like, yeah, if you go to my channel and hit playlist and you scroll down the second, you'll see first created playlist, so that'll show in reverse order my most current things that I've been, I've been playlists of things that I've been doing. Uh, but then if you go down below that, you should see Crusader Kings 2 playlists. Uh, ones that I particularly recommend is the Crusader Kings 2 Reconquista, if you want to see how as a uh, feudal Christian, you can uh, um, create an empire and how to fight Muslims. Definitely recommend that. That's one of my favorite series that I did last year. Uh, Holy Catholic Ireland is pretty straightforward. I just form uh, Ireland and then Britannia. And then I think I had to stop that a little bit afterwards because I was um, because an, uh, um, some sort of DLC or some huge event was happening that I wanted to focus on there. Uh, so I, I said, okay, guys, I'm ending the series. But it's 29 episodes long, so that's quite a bit of time. Uh, quite a bit of stuff you can learn. Mm, yeah, I've heard of Alpha Century. I've heard it's pretty good. Do I have any old god runs? No, I have been. I have done a live stream where I formed Scandinavia with... Or I think I was about to form Scandinavia with one guy. I might do that. If I do another live stream this weekend, I'll go play that, probably. Or maybe next week. Nice. Morale is more important. Um, yeah, I can get money from the Jewish money lenders, but you don't really want to do that too much because it hurts your temple vassal opinion. Yeah, so the Reconquista one is good. Another one that uh, one that I've done that people don't really talk about um, is my uh, Capet restoration campaign. So uh, this this family oh you know was rulers of France for centuries, and as you can see here in the ten. In the 1066 start, they're in a really good position, but I think I was playing them uh, on the day that Philip uh, Augustus, who was uh, Philip II of the Capetians, uh, takes charge. So that was about 100 years later in like 1180. Uh, so at that point, that's when uh, the Plantagenets, they have England, they've got Normandy, they have Anjou, they've got uh, Aquitaine. So like France is so beaten up that it's actually split in half, so you have a northern piece of France, a southern piece of France, and it's the low point of the dynasty. And um, and so then I managed to, you know, take it back, and uh, uh, if I remember correctly though, the very, very ending of, I was unable to get one more episode out. I basically, that series ended one episode before I wanted it to, because I was just about to actually become King of England, 
uh, so to like just complete the reconquest of France, I not only throw them out of France, but then become king of England. And it's one of those things like, so you don't physically see me become king of England, but it was going to happen in like five minutes. It was just a, one of those things where the, the saves all got broken because of an update. Yeah, the first episode of the France campaign, something very weird did happen. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see here. Ooh. The heavens briefly lit up and the ground shook as the rock from the sky crashed into the castle gardens. I sent my men to investigate and they came back with a lump of a curious metal we have not seen before. This metal will make for a truly legendary blade. But I keep telling y'all, don't sleep on my Roman Empire restoration campaign. It's not even at the good part yet. It's been some good stuff happening. Okay, cool. We have now a sword of heaven. Let me show you guys what this is real quick. This is a combat weapon, not a ceremonial one. Um, quality 3, prestige plus 1 per month, more piety per month, combat skill plus 12. Very cool. Uh, so... Uh, total conversion. Wait, wait, wait. One thing at a time. Yeah, so... So, how many episodes... Let me, let me actually check this. How many episodes of the, um... CK21 I've, I've already put up. Okay, so there's currently 11 episodes of my Byzantine Empire campaign that are up in CK2. The best character is not even going to get born until part 15. And then in part 19 and on, that's when things are going to really get awesome. So, like, the, the series is already good. There's been a lot of fun stuff that's already happened. But you guys don't even know how awesome it's going to get. It's, um, it's right now, it, it might become my favorite series I've ever done on the channel at the rate, uh, at the rate this is going. Oh, thank you very much, Aaron Buckley. Okay, now somebody had a question about a conversion mod. Okay, so um, in, in terms of uh, total conversion mods... Oh, no, this guy's very bad. Here's here's another tip, Fallen King. This is my personal rule. I don't hire a court physician if he doesn't have at least 15 learning. Uh, he's just going to end up like, chopping your dick off when you got the flu. <laughs> nice. Got some gold. Um, so total conversion mods. I do like the Game of Thrones one because it is based on the book series of Song of Ice and Fire and it's like meaning that everything in the the mod is based on the book, not the show. And so it is so much better because of that. You have all this expanded lore, all these different bookmarks that you can play in and stuff. Cool, we got prosperity. Wait a minute. Yeah. So we're, right now, in case you guys are wondering, we're, we're just sort of waiting to, um, we're waiting for our opportunity to attack France, which actually may be upon us right now, where we're gonna, we're gonna try to, uh, take Normandy, because, as you can see, I have a strong claim on it. Uh, we want to kill William the Bastard and stuff. Um... So, so anyway, I do like the Game of Thrones Total Conversion mod. I have heard really good things about other ones, but I haven't played them because I don't know the world. So I've heard, uh, I think Elder Scrolls is supposed to have a good Total Conversion mod. Um, what else? Where, uh, 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 yeah, Elder Scrolls, Warhammer... Things like that. Yeah, Young Griff is good. Oh, those are some other Crusader Kings 2 campaigns of mine you should check out. Yeah, none of those are in my playlist. I, I really gotta update my playlist list on the channel sometime. Uh, but, like, for example, I've got... Wait a minute. Uh, workshop is bankrupt. Well, isn't that freaking great? Hold on a sec. Okay, and you, I'm probably going to raise you myself. Uh, yeah, my, my, um, Damien Targaryen campaign was super fun. Uh, I did a Daenerys Targaryen campaign as well. Um, what are, what are, what are, what are some other ones I've done? Hold on a second, I've actually forgotten how many I've done. I've done a few, I think I've done five. Give me a second.
Let's see, so I've done, yeah, I did the Rogue Prince campaign. I did a Stannis Baratheon campaign, um, which got some views, but people just generally didn't seem to like it. Admittedly, that one was pretty rough. I had a, I had a bad time, but... Oh, yeah, I remember years ago when I did a Hearts of Iron 4 Game of Thrones, nobody was watching that. Nobody watched it when it was over. I had people actually telling me they were just glad it was over so I could do other stuff. They were pretty rude about it. Um, so, I would say, I definitely recommend, if you like role play, I'd say the Daenerys one is more fun. Like, if you want a, a, um, something like about a character you know. But I'd say the one I like more is my Rogue Prince campaign, where I play, uh, he's my favorite Targaryen, a Daemon Targaryen. He's a, um, he was the brother of, wait a second, wait a second, I lost the chat, guys. Uh-oh, hold on. Okay, got the chat back. <laughs> I thought I disconnected or something. Um, so the, what was I saying? Um... Yeah, yeah, so Damon Targaryen, he's my favorite one. He's not mentioned at all in the show. Uh, maybe he was. I only saw the first five seasons of the show. And, wait a second. Bastard son of mine. Not a chance. I've got real kids now. Uh, tree falls in the woods. Yeah. So, so, um... But anyway, yeah, that Damon Targaryen thing, it, it's basically... The, the Rogue Prince bookmark that I did, the idea is that his, his brother has declared that the daughter is going to be heir, not him. So he decides to go make his own kingdom. And so that's why I go, do where you start where you're just going after this kingdom of the Stepstones, which is just a bunch of worthless rocks, but then I expand out from there. And that was an amazing campaign. Some really interesting characters uh, popping up. I highly recommend it. Toledo is independent. Hmm. Well, in any case, um, what do I think about David Peterson, the creator of the languages? I guess he must have done a good job. I don't know enough about that to uh, comment on it too much. Is it in a playlist? Yeah, yeah. If you just type in, um, look up Conquering History, get like, let me search it right now. Look up Conquering History Games Rogue Prince. It should pop up. Yeah. The playlist should be the first thing that pops up. It's ten episodes. Super fun. Anyway, we're gonna um, we're gonna end it today. Uh, for now, cause I do have homework to do. <sighs> but oh, this was nice. This really let me cool off. <laughs> um. Anyway, thank you all for joining me. I'm conquering history games, and I'll see you around. Bye.